Hello, and welcome back to Code in 5 Minutes with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Code in 5 Minutes, we're going to continue to take a look at the Angry Bird-like game, where we uh, knock the little ball into the tower. Woohoo! Okay, so there's some changes that we want to make for this, and we also had some requests. The requests were to how do we keep track, how do we know when the, the, the tower is finished being knocked down, how do we record how many times we've shot. We hit the space bar and it starts again. So the idea behind that is, is we're going to add a couple labels up here. Well, we ha actually have a game module that has a score and a timer. We're not going to use the timer at this time, but we could. That, that might be a way to do it, just see how long it takes you to, to knock it all down. But what we're going to do instead is uh, base it on the number of times we shoot, like how many times we shoot, and see if we can um, calculate uh, when all of these are touching the ground. I'm not actually sure how Angry Birds finishes the tower, <laughs> but what we'll just do is if each of these little boxes hit the ground, then we'll keep track of that. And when they've all hit the ground, then the game is over and we can see how many times it's shot. However, you shouldn't be able to pick this thing up. So that's another thing that we're going to have to change is uh, you can only start like that. And as soon as you shoot, you can't then pick this up and shoot again. So we've got to fix that up. We have added a little bit of a particle emitter that uh, what, what that is doing is it's finding out if the circle is hitting one of these guys, then the particle emitter goes off. That's kind of neat, huh? And that was just a bit of extra that we threw in at the end of the third one, I think. So let's go into the code now and see what's happening. We're going to call it Slingshot 4. This will be the fourth code in five minutes. In other words, code in 20 minutes. <laughs> and sorry for that. Usually our code in five minutes are just little short things, but people just kept asking for the, the rest of it, so to speak. So we'll see what we can do. We're bringing in CreateJS, which is what Zim is based on, and Zim, the two libraries, Box2D, our physics engine, our Zim physics to help out. And as mentioned, we're going to bring in the game module as well. So that is called Game 2.4. I think we're on now. So these modules in Zim, by the way, do I have a browser open? No. Uh, these modules in Zim can be found at the top of the docs, or they can be found in the code section under the libraries, or in the top of the docs. Here they are, socket, game, physics, three, pizzazz, and the pizzazzes, as well as there's box 2D. Uh, we, we work with 3JS, and so these are various helper libraries in here at the top of the docs. And if you click on um, game, for instance, this is the game module, so you can just grab the URL from that. The all that stuff is in the docs as well. We're going to use a scorer, so that pops you down to the Zim game module. So these are docs on the game parts, uh, leaderboards, and uh, an isometric board. We've got a timer and a score. So we're going to bring in a score that will help keep us keep track of how many shots we've made and also how many probably how many of these objects we have left to hit the ground, like a countdown almost. Oh, we have three left. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that, I suppose. Oh, could possibly use an uh, indicator for that. That's that's a cool thing. A Zim indicator has a bunch of circles. And as you, as more hit the ground, you could make the indicator show that you're filling up or something like that. Anyway, we'll, we'll just use the scorer in both cases. All right, we come into the code and you can see the other, the other uh, code in five minutes videos to see how we built those other things. One thing that we did add, as mentioned, to the end of the third one there is this one, a little extra. So we made an emitter and we're going to emit something that looks a bit like it might be emitting pieces of the block, almost like we've chipped some stuff off. And so we've made a rect an orange rectangle. Those little standing tower things are orange, little small rectangles. That's what we're emitting. And we're also going to um, start it paused like that. 
So we start paused true. So that means it sits there, but it doesn't emit until the circle contacts something. So this will be what it's contacting, and we pass what it's contacting into this arrow function. I guess that's part of the arrow function. And if that type of something is a bitmap, that means we our circle has hit one of those blocks. The blocks are the only thing that's a bitmap other, other than the circle. So that's one way to do it. Um, anyway, those all the blocks are bitmaps. Everything else is not a bitmap. It's a shape like the, the ground or the borders. So there you go. If the type of the thing that we hit is a bitmap, then we emit, we put the emitter at the location of what we hit. So we locate the emitter at the uh, the object that we've the circle is hitting, and we spurt 10. So that's how we use contact in physics. There's Zim has hit tests. Hit tests are a method to find out if two things are hitting. But this is the physics world, and Box2D comes with a contact. And we've wrapped that contact to make it a little bit easier for us. So this is uh, Zim's version of that contact. So you should use contact, not the Zim hit tests. Zim hit tests uh, will be sort of unreliable as the physics world moves very quickly and stuff like that. So this is more of an equation-based hit. Whereas the Zim hit test is finding out if if two shapes are over you know if shapes are overlapping and all that kind of stuff. it's a harder calculation. So definitely we want to use contact. And indeed, this is how we can figure out if the how many of those shapes are on the ground. We count to find out if the shape has contacted the ground. It may not be totally perfect. It is possible that the shape could bounce off the ground and come back up on top of another shape, but it's a little bit rare in the way that we have the 10. Those are pretty big shapes. I don't think they'll do that. But it hit the ground once anyway. <laughs> so we'll keep track of how many times that hits the ground. All right, we're keying down. This is the space bar that resets our, our um, circle into place. And at that point, we set the dynamic to false so that it just kind of hangs up there as well. There's the ground. Here's the tile. Here's a little loop where we added physics to each of the elements of the tile. And in there, if this, if this is the tile, we would want to add the contact onto, onto the end of that to find out if the tile has contacted the ground. Oh, I can't remember. I don't think in the in the code in five minutes we did. I don't even think we made a ground. There's there's borders by default around Zim, and we did talk about the borders being set. That was like way up in the physics here, the boundary to apply the borders. And we've got um, so we had borders already, but the example that we're kind of following an example that's already been done in P5JS in Matter as a comparison. And that one had a ground in it. And again, one of the, the viewers in Zim said, well, the P5 one has a ground. And it's like, OK, we already had a ground. But if you really did want a ground, then we've put in the ground. And let's have a look at this now that we've talked about all this uh, one more time. here. So we'll open it up in a browser. That green thing down there, boink, <laughs> that's the ground. And all, all these things are up in the ground. All right, so uh, back to it then, shall we? Let's see, are we going to be wanting to do this? We could probably do it in Browser Plus. So open in Browser Plus. And there she is there. So, code in five minutes. Bum, 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 bum. I'm not sure. It kind of sounds like a lot to do in five minutes, doesn't it? Uh, Certainly, okay, let's let's see if we can do this anyway. Let's see if we can find out how many times we've shot it. So we'll put that little up here. We'll put that little uh, score up here to find out how many times we've shot. We'll also make it so that we can't throw it around. That's going to take a little bit of thought to figure out how we, how we can throw it, but then stop throwing it. Okay, and we'll get that done in five minutes, no doubt. The other score is going to be the same as that one, so just a little bit more, but calculating out if these, how many of them have hit the ground 
and adjusting that might be just a little bit over our five minutes. I don't really want to do another one. Ah, uh, code in five minutes and get a score on. Code in five minutes and then find out how many times it hits the ground. You know, so this might be a code in five minutes with a little bit of plus, and we can just end it there. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We'll see what we get. Uh, see how far we get. Uh, let's just uh, let's just do it, shall we? Uh, close that one down and pull up this timer. So we're going to start the timer. There she goes. Is the timer starting? <clears throat> First of all, if we want interface, we're going to put that in a new frame. So our interface, the frame right now is all moving. So we're going to make uh, const frame two is equal to a new zim frame. And we'll set it up the same way as the other one where it will be, oh, I think this was the scaling, it'll be fit. This was the width, so we'll do the same width, the same height. Um, we'll make it the color clear, so color colon clear instead, so that we can see through it. And we also have to say next frame, if we're going to still click through this frame, next frame is the original frame. And what that does is it passes interaction through from one frame into the other. So that's why we had, had to sort of turn to that format there. And we will say frame two dot on. This is one way to do it. It's a bit easier because the, the whole, like as we move this, the whole stage is, uh, is moving. And so we can't put the interface on it because the interface would move as well. So when that's complete, we will call this arrow function here and we will grab a const stage. So this is the stage within this uh, frame is equal to frame two dot stage. And it is in here that we're going to add our uh, score. So uh, mind you, we might need to access it outside here. So we'll go const, uh, what should we call this one? Let's see, shots, I guess. This is how many shots we've made. Oh, I've got to put something in it. Oh, I'll just go let shots. And then down here we can say shots is equal to a new scorer. And we will dot pose that at uh, 40 comma 40 in the top left. Let's see if it shows up there. And stage dot update dot Yoda date dot update. Still nothing. Oh, we have to say where to locate this. So um, that would be in the left top. We don't usually have to do this, but here we have to say on the stage. So this is the second the second frame stage. And it's still not showing up there, so let's see what's going on here. Frame two, oh, on ready. Ready, there we go. And we refresh, so the ready wasn't even being called, and there it is showing up. Now, we didn't have, like, we would have seen it, if we didn't put that in, we would see it, but it would be on the other stage. Watch this, we position it, and watch how it works. We shoot, uh, boom, look at that. It's on the other stage, and the other stage has moved. So that's why we want to put our interface on a whole new stage. So that is the current stage of frame two. Alrighty, how are we doing for time? 3.15, and we got that. All right, let's stop this thing from uh, being picked up like so. So we'll go on up, and when we key down, we will shoot that thing. Uh, we want to stop it from dragging at some point. Where's this? Circle dot on press up. Yeah, once we've pressed up on the circle, I think we want to say physics dot no drag. So we're not going to drag the physics, and we could specify a circle if we wanted. We also don't want the circle to even to interact with it. So we're going to say no mouse, and that will stop the mouse down here from launching all this stuff. So we'll say no mouse there. And the last thing is, is we want to increase our shots. Shots dot score plus plus, yay. Okay, so that's, that's that part. But we also want to bring that back once we do our key down here. I think we want to do kind of the opposite of most of that stuff. So let's copy that in there. 
and see if we can get this set up in five minutes. Physics.drag will bring back the drag on the circle. So we want drag and we can say on a circle. We want to set the mouse back to the mouse and we don't care about the score shooting thing. Is there anything else? Uh, I think that's it. So let us ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, pause that timer. Okay, and see if we've got it working. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. So we refresh here and I shoot, boom, I've shot once. Note that I can't pick that up again. So I can't pick up anything, but I hit the space bar and we're back here and now I'm gonna shoot again. Boom! Yay, we've shot again. That's the second shot. And now, boom! third shot. We've almost got them down, but unfortunately we don't know um, how many we need to shoot down, but I can't pick that up anymore. Here's another shot. So we've got more of a game going on, oh, almost. There is potentially, an, yay, I think we did it. I think we did it, but we don't know for sure. We'll just roll over. Yes, we did do it in seven shots or even six shots, but we didn't um, calculate if they've hit the ground or not. So we did pretty well. We got that in there in a new frame. And it is uh, indeed a game. We just have to look at it and say, okay, did we do it or not? <laughs> In this case, we do. We might want a reset as well. So we've paused the timer. We got a score. The request was, how do we do things like scores? We've also seen a little bit about contact as well, which was handy. So we've seen some of the things that was made in five minutes. Let's just add the few more. Um, I don't know, do we have to, uh, I could start the timer again and see if we could do the rest of it in five minutes. <laughs> I think we'd probably do. Do you want to? <laughs> the double five minutes, all in the same code in five minutes? This is more like an explore. Zim Explorer is a long thing where we uh, where we spend some time on it. But yeah, okay, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll reset the timer and see if we can do the rest in five minutes. How about that? So a reset of the timer, reset. And uh, let's see, do I have to resume or reset? I can't seem to refresh this thing. There we go, stop the timer and let's <laughs> refresh, start. Okay, so do we have our timer back? Yeah, two seconds. Can we do it in five more minutes? <laughs> so without giggling maybe, uh, let, what are we gonna call, how many are left? So this is how many are left and we'll copy the shots and call this left. We'll position this at 40-40 from the right-hand side. We might want to uh, make it a background color of something else, background color of yellow, for instance. And we also want to start it at a certain value. So that is the score. We'll start the score at eight because there's uh, 10 of these things, but two of them are already touching the ground. So we're going to start the score at eight and let's have a look. There it is starting at eight. It didn't go background color of yellow color. There we are. So background color, there it is yellow. We've got eight more to go because two of them are already touching the ground. Got that? That's uh, no big deal. Now, where do we want to put that contact? Right in here, dot contact like so. And this calls an arrow function. And inside the arrow function, we have the object that got contacted which, what shall we call that one? Um, this is the little tile things that, that we're hitting. So, uh, I don't know, we'll just call it OBJ, maybe OBJ. And then inside here, we want to find out if the, uh, first of all, if this tile that's hitting, so if the tile dot counted, um, if, if, so if, if the tiles counted already, or the object that it's hitting is not the ground. If object dot ground, not the ground. So we're basically trying to say, hey, if we've already counted it or the object's not the ground, return. So don't bother giving me a score, return. But now we have to fix up some things, don't we? First of all, we have to say to the ground, ground dot ground <laughs> is equal to true. So this is a custom property, a custom ground property that we're setting on the ground to say true. Actually, we could just say if object 
is not equal to the ground. That, that would make sense too. Not equal to the ground. That's better. I like that better. We don't have to bother with that. And then if tile counted, uh, how do we know the tiles counted? Well, we would put a tile. If, if it's in here and we're counting it, we would then say tile.counted equals true. Isn't that amazing? So there we are saying this one's already been counted. We have to take matters into our own hands. We could spell true. And that's great. Do you see anything else that we need in there? Oh, we have to change the score. So if it is contacting the ground, we want to remove one from the score. So that would be scorer, uh, which was what left, I think. Left dot score minus minus. That removes one from the score. I don't know. I don't think we need a stage dot update. Oh, we might because it's in the other stage. So it's in frame twos dot stage dot update. I doubt we'll need that, but anyway, there it is in case we do. And let's have a look. We shoot. <laughs> None of them fell. <laughs> so we shoot again. Ah! Hey, look at that. And look, there's four left. I, I can't see them, but I bet you there are four left. Yeah, there's four left. Super. So now what we need is some sort of reset if, if the number is bigger. And that might look like this. If uh, left.score is double equal to zero, then we want to do uh, start over again. And that would be new pane. Uh, we would show in pane, we would go const pane is equal to a new pane. And in here we would have text that would say something like again. <laughs> Again, and we don't have all that long, and we would dot show this, and then when we hide it, that would be pane dot on close, comma call this arrow function right here, and this would say, what is this thing called? Sling. Oh, it would say is go. Slingshot uh, four dot html. There we go. Stop the timer! Boop. Well, do you believe me? <laughs> we raced through that, didn't we? So first of all, we'd have to get all of these things to the ground to be able to test it. So probably it would be easier to say, once it reaches seven, if we knock one of them on the ground, if it's equal to seven, then we're going to pop up this pane. So do you see what we've done? We've popped up the pane with this text on it. So that's we show it. And then when the pane closes, we're going to just reload the page, and that will be like a restart. Okay. So imagine that we win the game if we, as soon as we just knock one thing down on the tower. Are you ready? There's the pane. <laughs> so much for the label, though. <laughs> Whatever. It's not. Uh, it's not text. It's a label. Label. Like so. That was the pane. Oh, we showed it. We put it in the wrong place as well. The label needs to go in the interface frame. So that would be frame, uh, that would be container is uh, frame two dot stage. There we go. So frame two's dot stage is the container for our pane. And let's, <laughs> so that'll lay, uh, with a comma in there. There we go. I'm sure we would have made that in another five. And I'll refresh. Hey, wait a second. New pane, squiggly, and container. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, the old double arrow. Okay, are you ready? Now, as soon as one of those things hits the ground, we're going to see our, our wind pane. There it is. And it says again. And we go, okay. Ah, look, and it's all reset for us. Again. We should wait, though, shouldn't we? I think it's it's popping up too quickly. But we did indeed get the whole thing done in yet another five minutes. So a 25 minute sort of game with score and conclusion and all that. If we if we wanted to wait, it's just a timeout. A timeout isn't um, and we can maybe wait two seconds and call this arrow function. Inside the arrow function, we would do this stuff, I guess all of this stuff. So wait two seconds and then show the pane. You ready? Refresh. 
And we're not at the end of the game, although we will play the game. It waited two seconds, and then it says again, and we go, okay. And there she be. All right, let's play it for real. Let's see what this game is like. We will go to, uh, if it's equal to zero, then. And wow, how about that? Did you catch that? I know we went fast through it, but <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> And are you ready for our full game? Although we didn't do an intro, we could have done a pain intro saying, hey, please, please start our game. So we pick up the, the guy and we shoot. Where should we shoot this tower to get the most, probably right in the middle, huh? Is this pulling far enough back for us? <laughs> that, was, that was pretty lame for our first shot. Um, let me just... Let's see if we can adjust that a touch. Circle. Circle. Center ridge, 350. Eh, maybe it's far enough. 400. Ah, okay. That's good. All right, so we refresh here. Uh, shoot! <laughs> oh, yes! It looks pretty good. We've got four left. One, two, three, and there's four. And I hit the space bar. Oh, I just slid them along. It looks like that one of them, though, went. And we've got two left. Dum, dum, dum. Oh, still two left. Four shots. One left. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Bummer. Well, it's on the way anyway. <laughs> yeah, we did it again. <laughs> nice. And we say, okay, seven shots. Yay! There's a Zim leaderboard, by the way, a leaderboard in the game board. You could do a leaderboard to keep track of that. That's all hooked up for you. Very nice. This has been, ladies and gentlemen, a code in five minutes with Zim, except it was more like a code in 25 minutes with Zim. At least it had the word five in there. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day. Thanks again for the original posters of this. Ciao. Come visit us.